Hey, how you doing? The Baytosti here, so let's get to the point. Are pilotless planes a good idea? Well, first of all, what kind of planes am I referring to here? Am I referring to RC planes, military aircraft, commercial aircraft? Well, in this particular video, I'm going to be focusing more on commercial aircraft. Now, going back to the topic of military aircrafts briefly, a wide variety of military planes are technically unmanned, controlled by nothing but a pilot on the ground. Now, considering that the Global Hawk drone, the largest of these military aircrafts, is nearly the size of a Boeing 737, who's to say that we can't apply this concept to passenger aircraft? Well, a big problem would be trust. The public simply isn't ready for a big step like that. While driverless trams and trains that get people from A to B are pretty much acceptable nowadays, an empty cockpit is simply beyond the acceptability range of pretty much all the travelling public. Personally, whenever I fly, I'm always rather comforted by the fact that there are conscious human beings up there at the front, monitoring the systems and making sure that everything is in check. With over a century of aviation experience backing up the piloting profession, how long is it going to take for the flying public to trust a computer-controlled plane with their lives? I'd say quite a while. Think about it. When a split-second decision has to be made that could possibly decide the fate of everyone on board, is a computer really the most reliable solution to resort to? US Airways Flight 1549 is a good example of humans making split-second decisions. It's been suggested that this miracle on the Hudson could have been handled better by a purely automated system that Captain Tullenberger and his first officer missed vital checklist steps on their way down during their descent and subsequent ditching, and many other things. But those two pilots, in that exact aircraft, encountering the precise situation and location that they were handed, managed to make some pretty good lemonade out of some pretty spoiled lemons. From a pure energy management perspective, maybe the plane could have made it back to LaGuardia Airport, maybe not. A purely automated system probably would have done its damnedest to do just that, but if it came up short, its last calculation would have resulted in an electronic shrug and a lot of dead bodies. On the other hand, feeling their wounded aircraft faltering and weighing their options, the pilots decided it would be best to ditch the plane into the river, which proved to be a very good call, as you will probably know. When lives matter, sometimes you have to play the sure thing, not the best odds. Human essence and judgement are things that a computer simply can't emulate. That's why it's called artificial intelligence, not actual intelligence. A pilotless aircraft may be possible today, but will it ever be practical? No. Now, many of you may argue that a ground pilot, a controller that controls the plane from the ground, is the best solution. But that brings us on to the next issue. This relates to the need for first-person perception of one's surroundings. It's what pilots call situational awareness. Assume for a moment you're a pilot remotely flying an unmanned aircraft with or without passengers. Now imagine something out of the ordinary happens. A bird strike, mechanical failure. You wouldn't be able to feel the vibrations. You wouldn't be able to see or smell any smoke that may enter the cockpit. You wouldn't be able to perceive or hear any abnormal noises that may precede something really bad happening. You'd instantly be faced with the need to make a potentially life or death decision. So in actual fact, unless you're sitting in that physical cockpit at that exact moment, you're not really going to know what's going on. In addition to that, you may not know of any other options other than the ones that are pre-selected for your use. Now consider a much more simple task, a driverless automobile for example, one that can handle any and all driving situations. But those are still a long way away. There's a reason why Google has it running around the Santa Clara County. If you gave it difficult weather, it couldn't drive. And that's just a car where the consequences of the things that can go wrong are pretty limited. You could just pull up to the side of the road if something were to go wrong. A mild inconvenience. On an aircraft, a lot more can go wrong. There are more factors involved, the weather's way more extreme, and more importantly, the machine itself is far more complex than any car you'd find around the world. No matter how advanced or automated planes are designed to be, it all revolves around the pilot being able to make a difficult decision in a stressful situation. If the autopilot were to fail, for any reason, such in the case of Air France Flight 447, the pilot would have to take command right away. He or she couldn't just pull up to the curb if something were to go wrong. In very real terms, your very life and survival are in the hands of the pilots. You depend on their experience, and the knowledge of the aircraft that you're on. So are pilotless commercial aircraft a good idea in my opinion? 
No. Unlike cars, the bar is very high for aircraft. Not in 10, not in 20 is when you see pilotless commercial aircraft, if ever, at all. Until the next time, goodbye.